Rob Bush here. I want to do a little free run speed test before I uh, change anything and see if any kind of improvements or whatever. But what we got attached is a little shoestring to the shaft and uh, pull start it and see how far it runs. I guess we can use the uh, time on the camera to see. Alright. There we go, that was a good one. Though you can hear the vibration, the imbalance. You can actually see it really bad in the shaft. It's already kind of wiped out a bearing, that outside bearing, doing this test before, but. Got out of that high speed, but it's uh, it's far from being stopped now. Let's let the uh, camera roll and see how long it takes for this puppy to come to a stop. It works a little better on carpet. Maybe the carpet absorbs that uh, vibration a little better. It should only get better from there on out. Get that. Uh, I was gonna cut the shaft short, but then I can't get the string on it. But uh, hopefully, maybe by the end of the day, we'll have the uh, new shaft laid down and the rotor pressed on. And while it's on there, we'll uh, true up the rotor while it's on the lathe, as far as the epoxy. And uh, there is. A, I'm hoping the epoxy is the imbalance in the rotor, but there is a slight imbalance in the rotor and we'll see that when it comes to the stop but uh, hope we'll take care of that too so um, it should run really smooth but I think it's just a matter of the epoxy is too thick and it's got a slightly heavy spot and it's it, it's it's thicker on one side just the way I cast it it was kind of a handmade deal but uh, it's still turning there I think it's over two minutes now And I do uh, anticipate putting the uh, the flywheel from the old machine, which is like a eight inch diameter flywheel out of a, uh, a treadmill machine, and that should uh, help increase this time, I'm sure, with the with the inertia. Really quiet though that that high speed imbalance with that bearing if I put a new bearing in it would probably go even faster again but it would wipe it out and uh, I don't want to ruin all the bearings yet better maybe flip flop them side to side because the back of the shaft is pretty true the center of it's pretty true it's just like uh, right after the bearing it's about an inch out is where the shaft is bent Alright, we're starting to kind of slow down a little bit. And the rotor's four inches in diameter, um, six neodymium dinium magnets. I think they were rated at 113 pounds of pull force. Set up north south, north south, opposing um, other than that it's it's basically a common window motor design. Um, what I've done differently is, uh, well not even really differently, what I've added to it is uh, the ability to add more coils and do this out of phase and do some other tricky stuff and 
set it up to be able to uh, move things around and experiment with. Here we go, we're starting to slow down. We'll see when it falls backwards. Yeah, that was probably it, it just reached the top. I would have said that was time, so probably about four minutes or something. Now we can see that imbalance. So we'll take care of the imbalance and once we get the new shaft on the lathe uh, and get the rotor mounted to the shaft, we'll be able to true everything up as uh, one unit and uh, I bet that time should increase a bunch and then we'll add the inertia and hopefully this puppy will spin pretty fast and go for a long, long time. Anyway, this is just a speed up, a free run test on the new window motor I'm building. It's Rob Bush. Peace.